Welcome to another episode of After the Dogs Raw for season 2016. And this episode is for After the Buy Round. Of course, the uh, Buy Round is now finally done and dusted. And now we can get into the first week of the AFL final series for season 2016. A massive final coming up on Thursday night. A do or die battle. I'll be talking about that very shortly. But off the top of the show... I'm going to be giving you an overview of our qualifying final in the VFL v the Casey Scorpions at Casey Fields. So I'll be telling you how our boys went in that game. Also coming up, an overview of the uh, historic uh, women's match at Witten Oval on Saturday night. It was the Western Bulldogs v Melbourne. I'll be giving you uh, the result as well as my thoughts on women's football and going forward. An overview of the All-Australian Awards is coming up. We had a couple of Western Bulldog players uh, make the team. I'm going to show you where they positioned in the All-Australian team for 2016. And then a preview of our elimination final via the West Coast Eagles is coming up as well as the fan favourite segment which is back for the remaining episodes, it is the five fan questions. I cannot wait. I've got some beauty questions from the Western Bulldogs Forum to answer. So I'm looking forward to that segment at the end of the show. But first, let's get into an overview of our VFL qualifying final clash. The, the top side, Casey School. So on Saturday, our Footscray Bulldogs VFL side were taking on the Casey Scorpions in a VFL qualifying final. So... Of course, the uh, loser gets a second chance and the winner goes straight through to a preliminary final and gets the week off next week, of course. It was a crucial game, this one. Of course, you might remember that our last clash against the Casey Scorpions, we won that one, but however, that was at Witten Oval. And of course, uh, we're reversing a top side because this side had finished on the top of the table in season 2016. It was a very close game in the first quarter. In fact, uh, we had the lead by only... Three points. It was 2 3 15, the Casey Scorpions to the Dogs, 3 0 18. And uh, it was a, again a, a very close uh, half time score. They had the lead, the Casey Scorpions, at half time by eight points. But then something happened in the third quarter, in particular the, the second half, uh, that really just pushed us out of this game, to be quite honest. We only kicked one goal in the third quarter to a bunch of goals to the Casey Scorpions. Then we only kicked one goal in the fourth quarter as well. So that's two goals in the second half to about four behinds. Uh, yeah, four behinds in the second half as well. And we were totally outscored in the second half. We were blown away. And it was disappointing, to be honest, a disappointing way to um, to finish this game. And, uh, of course, we do get the, uh, the second chance. But, um, yeah, very disappointing. The final score, 2018-128. Defeated the Footscray Bulldogs 8-10-58. Uh, the goal kickers for the uh, the Dogs, uh, Jamison and Hamilton kicked two each. Adcock, Greenwood, Hannon and Nash kicked singles for the Dogs. And the best players for the Dogs were Hamilton, Smith, Russell, Barry, Jamison and Honeychurch. So like I said, a bit of a disappointing result considering it was very close in the first half. Not sure what happened in the second half, whether the Scorpions came out and just turned up the heat on that uh, gas heater or... Uh, we just uh, dropped the ball in the second half. I'm not quite sure, but uh, we do get that second chance, of course, like I mentioned. And uh, it's a must-win next week if we want to go through to the preliminary final and have a chance to play off in the grand final. Could be a chance if we make the grand final to play Casey Scorpions again. Of course, it won't be at Casey Fields. It will be at Etihad. So um, 
that's of course a, uh, a bit of a bonus. Now of course our next game which is a do or die clash semi-final 2. It is on Sunday the 11th of September starting at 2.40pm at Northport Oval. It is between Essendon. Of course Essendon got a great win last week in their elimination final. So they're coming off a win going into this one. And we really need to win if we want to get through to the grand final. Now you can watch this game live on 7 for all those uh, Victorian viewers. If you live in Tasmania like me then you can still watch the game. You just have to go uh, to the 7 Plus website by uh, typing in Google 7 Plus and then going to that website and clicking the live button and then you can watch it uh, that way because of course um, the VFL isn't uh, broadcasted or uh, sent to broadcasted uh, on the Southern Cross uh, channel here in Tasmania. You can also watch it on the 7 Plus app as well. So if you're not at home and you're uh, out and about and you've got a mobile, then you can download the 7 Plus app and watch it uh, live through that way as well. So that's for all those Tasmanian uh, viewers. I'm not sure if that's uh, the case in uh, Adelaide or WA. I don't think so, but um, I know that uh, if you're in Tasmania, you can watch it through that way because we don't get the VFL on the TV like we did in the olden days of course uh, for ABC but uh, anyway like I said massive match coming up next week for our Footscray VFL team taking on Essendon let's hope we can uh, get through now Saturday night was a very historic night because uh, the women's exhibition all-star match took place between the Western Bulldogs and Melbourne it was at Witten Oval and for the first time those new Witten Oval lights were being used yes this game was played under the lights at Witten Oval. And I tell you what, it looked absolutely beautiful on TV. I just, uh, I just was uh, very amazed with how good that ground looked under lights on Saturday night. And hopefully this is going to be a regular thing, especially for our VFL side next year. Of course, we know that uh, there, there won't be a home and away game, uh, AFL home and away game uh, there next season. It might be a NAB Challenge game, but... Uh, yeah, it's a very beautiful thing, the Witten Oval under the lights. It's a beautiful oval, we know that, of course. But, um, yeah, this was an historic event, of course. This was being broadcasted, this game, across the network of seven. I believe uh, about over a million people uh, viewed this match uh, right around Australia. That's incredible. So, um, anyway, it was a good game, actually. It was very entertaining. Low scoring early, but still very entertaining. The Bulldogs had a, uh, a lead at quarter time by a point. We had a lead at half time, 5-3 to 4-8. The Dogs were able to take the game away though in the second half and win the game and actually win this type of game for the first time. Um, we hadn't actually, we've, these two teams, the Western Bulldogs and Melbourne, have been playing uh, this type of game for a couple of years now but the Dogs haven't been able to win one yet but now they have because they've won this historic match on Saturday night. The final score, the Dogs 14-6, 90 defeated Melbourne, 7 9, 51. Let's go through our goal kickers. Uh, Hope kicked six, Visco kicked three, Ashmore, Brennan, uh, sorry, Ashmore kicked two, and then Brennan, Lampert, and Jacobson kicked singles each. And then the best players for the dogs, you had Hope, Blackburn, Katie Brennan, uh, Shoki, uh, Visco, Davy and Lampert. So a very historic uh, Saturday night for women's football. I tell you what, this. Uh, this game was played uh, in front of uh, over 6,000 people at Witten Oval. Like I said, a beautiful thing to see. And uh, it's just great. This is a great thing for Australian rules, this uh, women's, uh, not only this women's match, but also the women's league coming up in 2017. I hope uh, all you Western Bulldog supporters get behind our women's team in 2017 because, uh, you know, it is going to be a growing thing, but I think it's going to be a very big success uh, once, it starts get, once it starts getting going. And I can't wait for the for the women's league next year. So um, congratulations to of course women's football, uh, the AFL for organising this event. It was a real showpiece, a real uh, a real exhibition, but also a real um, beautiful event that um, was showcased at one of the most uh, modern grounds in Melbourne, and that was the Witten Oval. So uh, fantastic uh, girls, and uh, of course Katie Brennan, by the way, she's uh, becoming one of my uh, inspirations for the. Uh, for AFL footballers, she was outstanding on Saturday night. Played a fantastic game, and uh, it was it was great on Saturday night. Great event. Okay, time now to have a look at the All Australian team for 2016. Of course, the All Australian Awards night was held on Thursday night at the Melbourne Exhibition Centre. We only had two players nominated 
in the 40-man squad. I talked about this last week in uh, Marcus Bonapelli and Matthew Boyd. These are uh, two guns of our club this year have uh, performed at uh, the highest level, as we know. And uh, it was absolutely outstanding because they both got in the All-Australian squad. They were named on the interchange. I thought it was going to be very unlikely that uh, they were both going to be named in the end, considering that we got to uh, the interchange point, And I thought uh, it's probably only going to be one player for the Dogs named on this interchange. But two was named, which was outstanding. So... I, look, I have no complaints with this um, this All Australian side. It was uh, unlucky that uh, the Bonds or Boyd couldn't uh, actually slot into one of the first team uh, positions. But I can't complain with this side. Um, you've got you know the likes of um, you know players like Rance. Uh, obviously, he's been outstanding this year, as we know. There's also Hanelbury, Kennedy, who all deserve a spot. Uh, you've got Franklin as well up forward. I I think I agree with them being on the bench, of course, because I, I can't really take out any other player from this squad. I know there were some people in the forum saying, well, why does Selwood get a go in this side? But, you know, he's been an outstanding captain this year. It's as uh, simple as that. But well done to uh, Marcus Bonapelli and Matthew Boyd. It's a fantastic effort to get in an All-Australian squad. And uh, especially Marcus Bonapelli, he's still so young yet he's uh, making a name for himself each and every week and each and every year ever since he debuted. And it's a fantastic achievement for him getting on the All-Australian team. Now, Matthew Boyd, by the way, I uh, managed to discover last week that he was out of contract. I never actually knew that. And we haven't signed him up. I'm not sure what's going on there. I hope we sign him up very soon because... Um, He's got to go on next year. He's no retirement, not no way. He's a he's a gun at the moment. He's in fantastic form. He could probably go on for another two or three years. He's in that good form. So I don't know why he's not uh, been signed up yet. Maybe they're waiting for the end of the season. Maybe they want to get the deal right or something. Maybe it's about the money. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, I, get him signed up straight away. He needs to be in that 2017 Western Bulldogs squad because he is a real influence. Okay, time now for our elimination final preview. And we are taking on the West Coast Eagles on Thursday night, Thursday the 8th of September, starting at 8.10pm. This is going to be a massive, massive game, of course, for us as a club. Of course, we are still hurting from that elimination final last year against the Crows at the MCG. It was a, by a so little margin, yet... Uh, we lost the game when we really could have won it. I think uh, this is going to be a tough game, of course. We know that, but also there is no reason why we can't win it. We have got the side. We beat this mob earlier in the year by eight points. It wasn't Eddie had, but um, we've learned from our mistakes, I reckon, against uh, the Fremantle Dockers at Domain Stadium a couple of weeks ago. We have to, uh, Surely in this uh, last week we've been able to fix those things up, and I'm sure... Um, our uh, our first side can go over there and really give it a good hard crack. I think, uh, you know, even though the Eagles were quite impressive a couple of nights ago against the Crows, I think, uh, or a couple of Friday nights ago against the Crows, I think we can beat this Eagles side. I really believe we can. We're, we're in with a shot. And um, I saw Red WB, by the way, uh, post something on the uh, the forum saying that um, our, our buys, uh, in between our buys, the uh, the game after the buy has been uh, one of our best games. Uh, for example, uh, of course, we lost that uh, NAB Challenge game against Collingwood, had the buy, came back in versus Fremantle, played exceptional football, and then, of course, we uh, had the buy after that Geelong game and then uh, actually went on to win against the Swans, and that was away from home. So we can win anywhere. We just need to be able to play our best football at the right time, and that's exactly what we didn't do against the Dockers a couple of weeks ago. So big clash this one, of course. Uh, Thursday night football is going to be a bit different for us. I'm sure a lot of these players probably haven't played some uh, Thursday night football uh, or at least for a while. We haven't actually had a Thursday night game for a while, have we? So this is going to be... Um, an interesting uh, chance. Of course, we have to stop the likes of, of Josh Kennedy and, and so forth as well. He's He's been dominant uh, against us in recent times, hasn't he? Especially at Domain Stadium. And um, I believe also we're hoping to get Libba back this week as well, which uh, should be very, very good from a dog's point of view. So hopefully we, uh, hopefully we go over there, give a good crack. Uh, I'm hoping we do. I cannot wait for this one. The elimination final, 8.10pm Australian Eastern Time. You can watch it live on 7 and Fox Footy. If you're going over to the game, then do enjoy it and cheer on our dogs. Hopefully, we can get through to week two of the final. Okay, time now for the fan favourite segment, and it is the five fan questions, and uh, this is where I answer five 
questions from the Western Bulldogs forum asked directly to me. So if you don't remember the segment, that is what I do on this segment. We start with Marissa Clayton who asks, can we beat the West Coast Eagles? Of course we can. I know some people are, are writing us off dramatically just because we uh, lost that game against the Dockers. But um, hey, what did we do last year? We, um, we lost against the Lions and then came out the next week uh, in that elimination final against the Crows and gave them a show. It wasn't a one-sided affair, was it? So I don't think this is going to be a one-sided affair. I think we can win it. I think we can. We beat this mob uh, earlier in the year, as I mentioned, by eight points in round 11 at Etihad. Of course, different ground, which will matter. It is a bit wider, those wings, and uh, yeah, the, we can get lost on the ground, which is what we did against the Dockers, but um, I think Beveridge has got something a bit a bit stronger in this uh, in his mind for this game plan going into the, the game, and uh, I think we can do it. I think we can win. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm backing our team here. I believe we've, uh, you know, Stringer Libba coming back. Stringer, of course, is coming off a couple of good games in the VFL. He'll be back in form, ready to go, take it up to the players. Of course, Boyd will need to showcase his uh, his form up forward. That's uh, Tom Boyd, of course. We've got Matthew Boyd as well up in the back line. A couple of others as well. Hamling, Roberts uh, there as well. You've got so many other players as well. Picking uh, Daniels and, and obviously... Uh, Players like that who can just perform week in, uh, week out. I think we can do it. Dan B. Hall asks, Why do we play the forwards so far up the field that when the ball is turned over, there is no chance they can get back to provide a target? Is there any plan to change that and to increase our scoring potential and give players like Boyd and Stringer a fair go in their natural positions? It's an interesting question, that one, because... When we, um, when we have our forwards up inside 50, and I've seen examples of this a, a couple of times this year, I think the most, uh, the recent memory of this was uh, the recent game against St Kilda that I was at at Etihad Stadium in round 18 when we lost that game, of course. We were just banging it inside 50 that day. We were just banging it inside 50. No one was really providing a target for us. We had... I think we had Boyd and a couple of others as well up in that uh, Ford 50. No one was really providing a target and no one was really taking a mark and it just wasn't working. It was just coming straight back out and I think uh, I was listening to radio that day. The commentators made the point as well and so I think that's why we sometimes play Ford so far up the ground because every time we get it inside 50, no one actually wants to take a mark. Like... Tom Boyd's a work in progress, uh, let's face it. Jack Redpass probably been the only player this year who's probably, um, you know, really been that target up forward. And, of course, he's been injured now, so he won't star, he won't, um, he won't star in, the, in the Bulldogs' side, probably not for next year either. So, you know, we need to get Tom Boyd and Stringer in form and actually have them, um, if we want to be able to uh, drive it inside 50 and actually present... Um, you know, present the ball to a player. They need to be presenting a lead. And when I mean a lead, they need to push off their opponent. They need to, um, you know, piss off their opponent out of the way and actually, you know, basically, you know, pr provide a lead so it, it sticks, you know, out in front or, or on their chest or whatever. And uh, same with contested marks and stuff. They need to be able to, um, you know, be contested. And that's not what Stringer actually provides, does he? He actually, he, the only real thing he can provide is a lead because he's, he's, um, he's strong, but he's not, you know, he's not big in height. So that's why we, we get uh, so far up the ground sometimes because we want to be able to run and carry the ball. So as soon as it comes out of the back 50, bang, off we go. Give the go, give and go, give the hands. You know, Johannesson's good at it. You know, run and carry, you know. Drive it inside 50, try and get that running and carrying movement so then we can get it inside 50 and, and um, maybe out the back. That's why we, we, uh, we have forwards so far up the ground. So, well, the only thing I can really say is if to, to change is that, you know, Boyd and um, uh, Dixon as well, uh, you know, Dixon's probably a lot shorter than Boyd and, and probably isn't that, um, that, you know, big key forward. Uh, you know, you know, you need players like that actually providing a lead. You, you know, if you're going to, um, if you're going to have forwards inside the 50 and, you um, you know, if you're going to kick it to them, they need to be providing a lead or they need to be good one-on-one. -on -one. Matt Button asks, Adams shut Kennedy down earlier in the season. Who has the job this time? Uh, Marcus Adams did very well against Kennedy in round 11, as we know. He only kicked one goal that game, which was um, quite impressive, considering that he's kicked uh, bags on us in the past. Um... 
The only couple of players I can think that will probably have to play on him is is um, you know you've got you've got Fletcher Roberts and um, you know Fletcher Roberts uh, has he has the height the same height as Josh Kennedy, but he doesn't have the strength and that's what's going to let him down in those one on one you know one on one battles between him him and Kennedy if he was to play on on Kennedy so. That's a that's a query uh, because you know we know Roberts is is quite lean, and you know Kennedy could probably easily bump him out of the way to to you know grab those grab those marks. Ha Hamling is uh, another one. He's probably a little bit shorter, but only by a couple of centimeters. Doesn't have the uh, he probably has a little bit more strength than Roberts. But then again, Kennedy is just a couple of centimeters taller, and he probably has uh, more of an arm span than. Uh, then ha uh, Ham Hamling and uh, probably then Roberts as well. So I, I think what we need to do is I think we need a, a couple of players actually kind of being aware of him and actually keeping an eye on him. I think uh, I think I don't think we're going to win the one-on-one -on -one battles if we if we play on him. I think we need a couple of players actually trying to you know every time the ball comes his way a couple of players to actually you know spoil it and and um, you know that that fist and and um, you know, obviously defend it. So, yeah, I, I don't think uh, I don't think just one player is going to work on him because I don't think we actually have uh, at the moment a real key defender that can actually tackle him well. And that's no offence to any of our players or anything. It's just Kennedy's a good player. You know, Coleman Medal the last couple of years. You know, he is a gun. So he he needs to be stopped, and I think he needs to be stopped by a couple of players being well aware of him in the back line. And that that might mean having an extra defender inside the the back line that might have to happen if we're going to tackle Kennedy because obviously we need to be aware of all the other players in there as well there's a couple of other players of course Darling springs to mind as well so um, maybe an extra backman inside that defensive 50 might be a, uh, a, a chance to work for us. Jen Evans asks who will stop Jono Giles, he was good last week for the Eagles, wasn't he? Or a couple of Friday nights ago against the Crows at Adelaide Oval in their win. He was quite impressive. He was quite good and he was quite influential for the Eagles side. I think if he plays in the ruck, you'd have to say Roughhead or, or Boyd will take him. You would say it has to be someone who's who's he's, who's basically similar height to him or otherwise, you know, we're not going to be able to stop him. So um, probably be those couple of players, maybe a couple of others, maybe, I don't know, maybe... Cordy, maybe I don't know, but um, yeah, he he will need to be stopped because he was he was pretty good against the Crows, and I think Roughhead Boyd, predominantly Roughhead, so Boyd can be in the in the forward fifty, but um, yeah, we'll just have to see. And then the final question of the five fan questions for this week is uh, Nick Della asking who will kick the winning goal for the Bulldogs against the Eagles in a close one. I think Liam Picken will. He has been impressive, hasn't he, this season and. Uh, He's had another good year. I think he will. Uh, he'll kick the. Uh, he'll kick the winner. I think. I don't know why I'm actually picking him. To be honest, I just kind of have a feeling that if it's a close one, Liam Picken will be the uh, the goal winner. So um, or the the game winner. So um, yeah, Liam Picken for me. And that is it for this episode of After the Dogs Raw. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video, and subscribe because I do some other content on this channel, including. The Ultimate AFL Show, massive episode coming up this week. Of course, I'm going to review the All-Australian Awards, the uh, NAB Rising Star Award winner as well. So if you want to hear my thoughts on, on who wins, then uh, do check out the Ultimate AFL Show on Thursday. Of course, the EJ Witten Legends game, and of course, a preview to week one of the finals. So check that out. Until next week's episode of After the Dogs Raw, let's hope our AFL and VFL sides win this week. Until next week, I'm Jacob. I hope you didn't notice my coldy, voicey, shit voice. I uh, hope you didn't notice that uh, at all. But um, anyway, until next week, hopefully I'm, I'm a little bit better. But until next week, I'm Jacob. Bye for now.